waiting lines or queuing theory is one of my favorite topics in operations. i think it's just an interesting it's an interesting combination of some math and and really some strategic elements of how we manage the flow of people in a service landscape. when i talked last week about inventory being primarily but not exclusively a a product focused element of operations waiting lines or queuing theory is much more of a service focused facilities management element of operations and it's and it's thinking about and talking about how we manage the flow of people through our system and that's important because we have to think about service levels how long people have to wait but we also think need to think about the number of people we're having waiting and then how much space we need for those people so this short video will be an introduction to the concept of lines and queuing uh, and there'll be a separate video where we where we talk about some of the mathematical elements of lines and queuing and then a third one or maybe several more after that with some specific examples uh, of the types of questions you might get in an operations course or, or on an assignment and and how to uh, how to interpret how to execute and interpret those so this one is really a a quick overview of some of the key concepts so let's let's begin uh, a line is obviously one or more customers waiting for service so it is it is how long they are waiting the customer population is uh, sort of how many people might come and wait in line now usually in a, that that matters uh, usually in some of the simple ones we'll do in an introductory operations course we assume it's infinite but uh, this uh, this is a, a concept that is important how many people might come and the facility is uh, is where we provide service or we execute sometimes this is in production oriented queuing is also production uh, uh, insight but mostly service and and the service facility is where we provide that service to the customer who's lining up and then finally the priority rule uh, is uh, how we decide who the next person in line or who the next person to serve might be now uh, the obvious one is the next person in line so first in first out type thing but sometimes we you know if you go to an emergency rule room they will triage you and then look at urgency uh, in some cases you'll say this customer isn't going to take very long to serve this person's going to take a long time so we're going to prioritize those and we'll talk a little bit more about priority rules and then the last concept is the service system in the service system it thinks about the number of lines and the arrangements of the service facility so do we have you know like a grocery store where we have multiple lines and multiple cashiers or like an indigo or a bookstore where they have multiple cashiers and a single line do they have like a tim hortons drive through at one place where you order and another place where you pick up so that you might have sequential things and so all of those affect how people or products flow through the system so we have here a customer population uh, we have a line we have a priority rule we have service facilities and then we have served customers and so managing this element here in the middle is really what uh, this part of the uh, this this part of operations is all about so there can be a number of different things uh, you could say uh, a single line and multiple servers i've seen this at indigo the bookstore uh, they used to be like this at uh, at customs when you came into the airport uh, but now because the machines we tend to have uh, more individual lines and then a single line getting to a number of uh, customs agents uh, we can also have multiple lines for individual workstations as we often see at the grocery store uh, and actually if if i was to ask you which of these would have all else being equal the shortest waiting times uh, the shortest expected waiting times because we're calculating expectations based on distributions uh, which would you guess 
Uh, the truth is that this one has the shortest expected waiting times. Now we do this one because it, it sometimes it's a space requirement. This often requires more space. Uh, and uh, this one also allows us uh, to uh, change the perception. If you see this, uh, you sometimes get discouraged, even though your expected waiting time is low because we have all of these servers. This looks, uh, this often looks better. And the last thing is, in the grocery store, the highest margin items are usually at the cashier. So they don't mind if you wait here a little bit and pick up a package of gum or a chocolate bar or a magazine for those who still read magazines. Uh, and, and so we do all of those sorts of considerations when we're managing lines. The channel is one or more facilities required to perform a given service. So that is, uh, if you have a checkout counter, every checkout counter provides the, 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 the same service and you can have multiple channels. Uh, and the phase is the step in providing the service. So if you have, uh, go back to my customs example, if you have a machine that you line up for where you scan and do your information, and then you have a second place that you line up to show the output from that machine to, to a live customs agent, those are separate phases in the process. And, and we need to think about how the service times at each of those phases and how that affects uh, the line. And then we have the priority rule, which we're going to spend a little bit more time talking about later. So uh, we can have a bunch of different arrangements. We're going to look primarily math mathematically at the single channel, single phase. Most, uh, most introductory operations course to explain the concepts and show some of the math uh, sort of limit themselves to this. And that's where I usually do. And it's the simplest, right? One line, one service facility, one phase, uh, and, and away we go. But we can also have multiple phases, one line, two facilities, so, uh, where, where you have multiple phases, you get, you come here, uh, and then you go to the next, uh, the next phase. Uh, you can have multiple channel, single phase, so you have multiple servers here, uh, and a single line. Multiple channel, multiple phase, so that people go through. I mean, all of these are, are pretty clear. All I'm highlighting is we can have many different ways to manage the flow of people through the system, and we need to think about them and have mathematical models that will do that. Uh, and and you know we can have different types of service where it's where it's mixed. So let's spend a couple of minutes here on the priority rule, uh, and then we'll wrap up this video. The priority rule determines which customer we serve next. Uh, so really it is how do we prioritize who gets served? Uh, and most service systems use the first come first serve rule. Uh, other priority rules can include, and I'll talk about those in a second, but first come, you're in line, you get to the front of the line, you are next. That is the one that is the highest perceived fairness and is the easiest one to manage. But you can have other ones too. Earliest promise due date. So uh, if you think about um, if you've promised to deliver something to someone and they've had to wait because you're uh, because of uh, delayed service or something, you would, you know, if you're an appointment in a doctor's office and you've gone late, even if you arrived later than someone else, but your appointment was first, you would be the first to go in. So that's the earliest promised due date. Uh, talked a little bit about this one already, the customer with the shortest expected processing time, which is really just if, if this customer is only going to take a minute and this customer is going to take 30 minutes, it, it might not be unreasonable to take this first customer first. So shortest expecting processing time is another one. Uh, pre there, there can be preemptive discipline too, which is a rule that allows a customer of a higher priority to interrupt the service and a customer. So uh, 
think about this uh, 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 in emerge. The, I mean, in emerge, they will do uh, a priority rule where they think those people who are most critical uh, will go to the front of the line. But even once you're inside emerge and waiting to see a doctor, you might have seen the doctor preliminarily and he, was, he or she were gonna come back to do something else, but then there is an urgent case, I've had this happen to me, where someone comes in within an ambulance and the doctor stops the, the work on you or doesn't come back as quick as you expected and prioritizes that. There can be other, there, there can be other uh, preemptive disciplines you know, a frequent flyer customer or a member customer who comes in who then might get prioritized and moved to the front of the line. Those sorts of things can happen. So there are a variety of things that we think about when we're managing flows through. And the decisions we need to make are uh, uh, how fast are people coming? And this will really be reflected more completely in the, in the second video where we talk about uh, where we talk about uh, the math and, 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 and determining how long the line will be. But we think about arrival rates, which is the, the, the number of people who come and try and get into line, uh, the number of service facilities, the number of phases. More phases increases costs, but it can decrease waiting times. Uh, one of the reasons Tim Hortons put in the ordering uh, microphones up ahead because it does then allow them to get the order together while you are in the second line getting up. It increases people's satisfaction with the process and it decreases waiting time. There's also evidence in the research that says that even if you have a long waiting time interrupted by an interaction with someone, you feel less put out by that long waiting time. So having multiple phases uh, can also improve the customer experience. Number of servers per workstation, we'll talk about uh, service design later in the course, uh, efficiency, priority rules, and line arrangements. So those are all things that we need to think about as we're planning not only physical uh, uh, facility setup, but also thinking about how we want, what sorts of customer service levels we want to achieve in our, for our service facility. So that gives you, in, in about 12 and a half minutes, a quick introduction to some of the concepts uh, around uh, queuing theory or waiting lines, uh, and uh, I'll highlight some of the math in the next one, and then several examples in other videos. So that's it for this one. Have a great day.